Now I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can make your grain spawn medium at home. The most reusable and small scale method that you can use is to use a reusable glass ball jar and you can make the lids yourself so that you can continue to reuse your container over and over and over until you feel like you're ready to scale up and use polypropylene bags, which are common for production in the mushroom industry. This bag is going to be a three pound bag, and this is labeled as a 3T filter patch. This is what you're gonna to wanna to use for grain spawn is the T-type filter. This filter type is 0.2 micron filter, and rod bacteria is 0.3 microns in size. That doesn't mean that somehow that rod bacteria couldn't get through this filter patch if it were able to come through with water. However, just by being exposed to the air, this should prevent rod bacteria and all other larger contaminants from entering the grain medium. The reason I mentioned the rod bacteria is because it is the smallest of the contaminants that you're likely to encounter. So using a 0.2 micron filter, T-type filter, is going to prevent that bacteria and its larger contaminants from entering. If you wanna scale up your grain production even higher, then you can move on to a 14T bag, which has the T filter patch, 0.2 microns, and it's a 14 size bag, which is a five pound bag in this case. So these are your options based on the scale you wanna use. Just a little amount of grain, three pounds of grain, or five pounds of grain. If you decide that you love cultivating mushrooms and you wanna build a mushroom farm, then you can look at the XLS bags, which will easily allow you to get up to 10 pounds of grain spawn or substrate and are the preferred method for those who are growing at a large scale. For most home cultivators, either the jar or the three pound bag is going to be sufficient. Another thing that you can do when you're cultivating using the open air inoculation techniques is you can add an injection port to the grain medium container that you're going to be producing grain spawn from. For the jar, you could simply do this by drilling a hole and adding an injection port next to my polyfill filter here. This is an easy low cost way to create a filter on your grain jar by just buying some polyfill from your local craft store and just plugging the hole with that. You could also use those syringe filters that we used for our liquid culture medium. However, the polyfill is sufficient for the grain medium as there's no liquid that will be passing through this and the polyfill is tight enough to not allow contaminants to pass through. If you are incubating or storing this in a place where you think it has the risk of bacterial contamination, I do suggest placing aluminum foil over the top of your jar to prevent any other contaminants from passing through this polyfill. However, it is sufficient in most cases for protecting your grain medium. And by adding that injection port, you're able to do this all open air with no worries of contamination. If you're using bags to produce your grain spawn medium and you wanna do it in open air, then you can buy these adhesive injection ports that stick on the bag where the adhesive is strong enough to not come out through the pressure sterilization process. So now let's say you wanna produce a five pound bag of grain spawn, but you're not sure how much dry grain to water to use. The math equation that you'll use for this is taking your final grain weight and dividing that by 1.4. That'll give you the dry grain amount that you're wanting to use that you can then multiply times 0.4 to 0.46 depending upon your inoculation route. In a five pound bag instance, five pounds is roughly 2,250 grams of grain. If we divide that by 1.4, we get 1,607 grams of grain. We'll round down to 1,600 for the ease of our math problem, then multiply that times 0.4, which will give us 640 milliliters or grams. So now you know that you need 1,600 grams of dried grain and 640 milliliters of water, and you can produce a five pound bag of grain spawn that's ready to be inoculated with liquid culture. Obviously, if you're inoculating with agar, be sure to increase your moisture ratio with the 0.43 or the 0.46 multiplication. So now let's put all our pieces together. 
For a three pound bag of grain, we're going to take our grain bag and we're going to weigh out a thousand grams of grain into our bag. Once we have that in the bag, we can either use a separate container or tear off our scale and just add the water straight into the bag. We're gonna weigh out 400 milliliters of water or 400 grams, and then we're gonna pour that into our bag. At that point, we're gonna fold our bag over, keeping the gussets pointed out of the bag. So once you fold your bag over into a nice roll, then you're going to load them into your pressure cooker or autoclave and sterilize at 15 PSI for 90 minutes. When you pull the bags out of the autoclave, they are gonna need to be sealed. And that is going to require you to go into a still air or a sterile environment so that you don't introduce contaminants to the bags once they're freshly out of the autoclave. If you're using jars, I suggest that you don't add it straight to the jar with the water and stick it into your autoclave. The reason for this is that it's going to cook all of the grain in the bottom of the jar and it's gonna form a hardened mass, which is extremely difficult to break apart. So what I suggest you do instead is to add the proper amount of grain with the proper amount of water and simmer it all together on the stove. Once you notice that all of the water has been absorbed, then your grain is properly hydrated. If you pull out a couple of kernels of grain and you try to crush them under your thumb, they should break easily. Now your grain is at the proper hydration ratio and can be added to the jars. I know this adds an extra step if you're prepping with jars. However, it is a lot easier than soaking overnight and simmering grain and you know that you have the exact hydration ratio so you don't have to let the grain dry to the touch or anything because you have absorbed the right amount of water into the right amount of grain. So now your grain is ready to load into your jars. So load it into your jars, giving a little bit of headroom on the top so that there's sufficient oxygen exchange and it doesn't become anaerobic by loading it too full into the jar. Once you've loaded your jars, you can cap it with the lids that you've made to go onto your jar. A note on those lids, you'll notice that I have my lids so that they're flipped upside down. This is so that when you go to do the actual spawning process to the substrate, you're not having to pry off something that has essentially pressure canned itself to the jar. This makes it really difficult and really fumbly and could potentially contaminate something in the process of trying to pry that lid off. Once you've capped it with your lid, you're going to add a small piece of foil over the top, and this is to keep any excess moisture from dripping through your filter patch. If you're using the hydrophobic syringe filters, this is not a problem, and you don't need to worry about that because they are hydrophobic. Once you've loaded your pressure cooker or your autoclave, you'll cook it at 15 PSI for 90 minutes. Once your autoclave has reached zero PSI, you can unload your jars and let them cool to room temperature. Once you've reached room temperature, you can either store your jars for one to three months or use immediately.